Hello everyone, and welcome back to the series where you can level up your Weeb level by learning some trivia on the Japanese culture and language and some nuances that were lost in the translation of an anime. In this case, for the first episode of Oshinoko. Let's start with some names, since Japanese names can often have meanings behind them, especially with characters that were created with specific personality or goals in mind. Hoshino is written with star and field, and even though I is only written in katakana, it's safe to possibly say it as I love. It could also be viewed as the transliteration of the English word I. Her full name can also be seen as Hoshino Ai, Love of the Stars, or as I of the Stars. Or Aquamarine, even if his name is from an English word, well, a non-Japanese one, it is officially written using kanji, as this. It's a creative way to make a name using kanji that have some reading that match what is wanted. It's using love, long time, and see. Ruby is also written with some kanji that could fit the pronunciation, with a kanji for lapis lazuli, beautiful, and clothes. The use of the first kanji might also be another sign that I was often mixing both babies, since a lapis lazuli is a blue stone that would have fit better with aquamarine. The name of the idol agency's president is Ichigo, written as one using the formal version kanji that is used in documents, and safeguard. And his company is named Ichigo Productions, but in this case written as Ichigo or Strawberry. The name of the president's wife, Miyako, is written in katakana, but it can also be the word for a capital or a metropolis. The name of the idol group that I was part of is Bikomachi, B small town, and Komachi can also be a term to talk about Abel, the beauty from a small town. One expression often translated into fave that is used a lot in the anime and is even part of the title is Oshi. This term comes from the verb osu, to recommend, to support. This is something that is really popular in the Japanese otaku culture, and lately it has even started to become used directly by Western fans, especially within the circles of VTubers that has really exploded in the last couple years. At first, this term started to really be used as Oshimen in the 80s with the idol industry boom to talk about which member of an idol group that you were supporting wishing success for. But it's with the big rise of popularity of AKB48 in the mid 2000s that it started to become seen outside of hardcore fan circles and even used on television in AKB48 Senbatsu General Election. In 2011, the word Oshimen was nominated for the New and Popular World Award of the yearly contest held by a correspondence education publisher, Yuken. But it took until 2019 for the word to be added to an official Japanese dictionary in the Daijilin. It's a bit hard to do, but a basic translation of the title Oshinoko will give something like the fave child. A bit of trivia, but when I is saying that our children will be attractive and have small faces, it is a common thing in Japanese culture that having a small face is a sign of beauty. And on the other side, having a big face or big head can be considered an insult. Ruby kind of went on a roll when watching the live concert of I on TV. The part that was translated to It's so eerie, it's like she's an oni, was kind of a pun from the expression Kiki Semari that she used to describe the feeling that I has such an intense presence that it could give you goosebumps. A more literal look at the expression is of something like a oni presence closing in. That's why Ruby then decided to use oni to describe I. 
when Ruby is going through a feed of people commenting on Ai, and Aqua described them as haters, the Japanese term that was used for that was anti, the transliteration of anti to talk about an anti fan. Following Ruby's play with the word Oni, when she was talking about being able to rewatch the life forever, and said, talk about value. In Japanese, she said, oni kospa, this time using oni as a slang adjective to reinforce kosupa, an abbreviation from cost performance. I'm actually not really sure how much the term otaku is known nowadays, but I thought that I could give it a quick stab at it just in case. You could say that it's kind of the older term for a weeb, it first started as a word to describe someone obsessed by anime and manga, but eventually became more general for anyone obsessed about a specific topic. It started being used in the 80s by fans in anime and manga events that would address each other using the second person pronoun, otakua. It's normally a polite pronoun to refer to someone of equal status that is not that close. It could be viewed in a more literal sense as your household. It then became a word to describe those fans that talk like that. In the scene when Miyako is starting to freak out and thinking about selling Ai's candle, she said that she will use the money to boost her faith host to the top of the monthly rankings. For those that don't know, she was talking about a nose club a type of club in Japan where you can go to be served by a good-looking man or woman in a hostess club that will also keep you company and converse with you. Those club often lets you choose which host you want, and your spendings of the night goes toward their overall ranking in the club. Miyako even used a slang from that world, Hontan, that comes from Tanto, being in charge, the word used to talk about the host that was requested. Hontan is thus used for your main host, the one that you always want when going to that club. For those that didn't know, the term graduation, when talking about the idol industry, is a more fancy and positive word used to talk about someone who has stopped being part of a group or simply being an idol that has moved on to other things. During the mini-concert, the epic baby dance show that was described as idol fan dance is coming from the term wotage, a specific expression to refer to a type of organized dance and sharing typical duotak fans. This probably comes in part because of the big culture in Japan of cheering squads and sports events that are similar to cheerleaders in the US but often involves a big crowd of people cheering in unison. Just a quick mention that the pure land of perfect bliss that Ruby mentions in front of I is a Buddhist term about Amitabha's pure land. The scene where Ruby was thinking about the child actress Kana leaking some baking soda instead of her being able to cry in dance again has to do with the two sentences being somewhat similar in Japanese. Baking soda is juso, and tensegon is jubyo. Licking is namelu, and crying is nakelu. This one is also kind of an anecdote, but I always thought that the expression goryoshi, like when can I used it when saying that the director forced I and Aqua into the script, was coming from Gorilla, with the image of a gorilla pushing something. But while working on this episode, I found out that it's actually from a type of river fish, called Goli, that are often clinging to rocks at the bottom of the water, and when trying to fish them, you have to really push hard with your net to be able to get them out of the rocks. The expression that the director used when talking about actors being disliked and getting a swollen head while still young was tinguninalu. In a literal sense, it's 
becoming a Tengu. A Tengu being a type of legendary creature, often viewed as spirits of the mountains, with bird-like features, a red face and a long nose. The meaning behind the expression could also be linked to another expression, Hanagatakai, having a prominent nose, which means to be proud. When Ruby gets mad towards the people on the internet, that says that idols can't fall in love, but they themselves fall totally in love with idols, she used a specific otaku expression, gachikoi. It's something that appeared in the 2000s, with the big boom of the idol industry, with AKB48 at the front. It comes from gachinko de koisuru, with gachinko competing in earnest, being a slang from the sumo world, which in turn comes from the onomatopoeia gachin, of a slamming noise that will result in an intense sumo fight. A small one, but the Japanese expression similar to the customer is king, is okiaksama wa kamisama, literally, the customers are gods. The expression for a barrage of criticism in Japanese and used by Aqua in the car after the funeral is Hukuro Dadaki. It's also used to describe people ganging up to beat someone up, and it comes in a literal sense as beating a bag. That's all I had for this episode, and you know what to do. Like this video to let me know if you want me to continue this series. Comment about the thing that you found the most interesting or surprising. And of course, subscribe if you want to have more chance seeing when I upload more stuff.